Our primary focus during any storm, minor or major, is to get the arterial roadways cleared up. The arterial, arterial roadways being those roadways that uh, help everybody to get where they're going, the major roads, if you will. Then we move into the collector roads, those roads that collect traffic out of the uh, various subdivisions and communities within the county. Then we focus on school routes and uh, once we have those three priorities taken care of, then we will get into residential streets and start plowing residential streets to get those cleared as well. There are three main components to snow removal in Douglas County. People, de-icing products, and equipment. In my opinion, people is the most important of the three. We have 76 people that are assigned to road and bridge, but we also have uh, people out of our traffic section, a few out of our engineering section that assist during the snow removal operations. Douglas County is a beautiful county, and in part because of the terrain and the topography that we have. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, diverse terrain and topography also create challenges for us. Based on experience, we average about 26 storms a year. Uh, again, that is an average. And we try to, try to keep enough abrasives on hand to handle at least three to four months. And when I say abrasives, that's a salt sand mix. Other products that we use, we also use some liquid de-icers that we make sure our tanks are full as we enter the September time frame to make sure that we're ready. We're standing in front of our granular storage and de-icer, liquid de-icer storage facility near the town of Parker at Hess Avenue and Tammy Wayne. Douglas County has two other facilities similar to this. One is located in Castle Rock and one is located on the west side of Highlands Ranch. The material behind me here on the left side is a salt sand blend. This is used in the rural parts of the county in areas where we need to have abrasive material for uh, traction and skid resistance. The material on the right is a, also a granular product. It's a product that works at lower temperatures and does not leave a residue like the salt sand mix. We've been going to more of this product over the last few years to reduce the amount of particulate matter in the air. Douglas County has joined other counties and cities throughout the metro area to try to reduce the airborne particulates, and this is an effort that Douglas County has used over the last few years to accomplish that. The tanks behind me contain a material that's used as a liquid de-icer in Douglas County, primarily in the northern arterial roadways. It's comprised of magnesium chloride and a corn derivative that allows the material to melt ice at a lower temperature than straight magnesium chloride. We look at and experiment with materials. We don't change for the sake of change, but we look at and if we feel that the material will provide an added advantage to the uh, traveling public, we'll give it a shot. We're standing in front of our truck line uh, here at our Galen D. Buck Maintenance Center. On my left are our trucks. They're plugged in. They have snow plows on them. They have V-boxes and they're ready to go in case we have a storm this weekend. On the right side we have some different specialty equipment. We have motor graders that are used for removing snow from our gravel roads. We have front end loaders that are used to load our aggregate products onto the trucks during and after snowstorms. We have a, a term that our supervisors, all of our crews use, it's called dressing the trucks and literally putting the equipment, the snow blades or the snow plows and the sanders on the equipment because we don't keep that stuff on the trucks full time. We use the same trucks that we use for snow removal, maybe spreading gravel one day, hauling asphalt another, or pulling a water tanker the, another day, or a low boy moving a piece of equipment. Thus, we have to do what is referred to as dress the truck, getting it ready for snow. Our, our crews, before they quit for the day, will be dressing those trucks, making sure we're ready for any event, be it major or minor, and making sure the trucks are loaded and prepared to move as soon as the crew reports. 
now we're they're kind of predicting snow for the weekend is the reason we're getting some of our equipment ready to go for the weekend. So if it does, something does come in, we can go out as supervisors, check the roads, and we start making them calls on how the storm is coming in, anticipating on how many people we call in. And then if it gets bad enough, we go to a 12 hour rotation shift where we work 12 hour shifts and we go home for 12 hours. So we're not out here getting anybody overworked and in a, in a jeopardy of getting tired because it's it's a very tedious job and there's a lot of things we got to watch for out on the out on the road. You're looking at a tandem axle plow truck with a 12 foot mow board, which is the plow on the front end, and about a 12 to 14 yard V box sander on it. We also have pre wetting capabilities to pre wet the material before it comes out with a liquid de icer. We have the conveyor up on top there, which moves the material from the front of the uh, v box to the back dumps it out the bottom and then it hits this spinner which is and then it spreads it out across the road we can set it variably the black gate with the jack and the ruler on the side is how we can set how thick a material we want to come out on the conveyor plus we can vary the speed of the conveyor and then the piping at the top is our pre-wet spray bar this is our control for our plow up down left and right and these two are to control our sander. This is how we raise our bed. And this is how we put it back down on the frame of the truck. And then that's neutral. All my other functions are my truck strobes, sander strobes, sander lights, which are my work lights on the back of the truck. And then when it's during the summer use, we have the belly and our tanker, our main disconnects. Besides that, it's pretty much just a standard truck inside here. This is a GMC 5500 four-wheel drive plow truck. It's one of our smaller units. It has a nine-foot plow on the front, a two-yard spreader in the back, and we use it in subdivisions in the smaller, tighter areas. It has a tighter turning radius and more maneuverable. Well, this is the snow plow. This is your lifting cylinder to raise it up and down. These are your angle cylinders <clears throat> for whichever way you'd like the snow to go. This is the spring back plate for if you catch manholes or curbs, it flips out of the way without tearing the plow apart. And it comes off in the summertime, <clears throat> so we have a smooth truck to haul personnel or equipment to other jobs. This one has a smaller granular sander that slides in the back. It's just a smaller version of the big trucks. This is our liquid deicer unit for mainly Parker Highland Ranch area. It holds 5,500 gallons. The spray bar here, we have one here which has pencil nozzles on it, which penetrate into the ice to get underneath to melt, and it'll cut the ice. And then we have boom buster nozzles here so I can spray a whole lane to the right, and I also have one on the left so I can do one, two, or three lanes at a time. During the winter, this is mainly for spraying de-icer. Uh, during the summer, we water roads for dust control. Um, it's also set up for helping out with fires. I can fill t fire trucks with it, uh, ponds, and stuff like that. This here's our uh, 143H motor grader. We use it pretty much all year long. It's mainly used in the gravel road process of plowing, grading. In the mild snowstorms, we more normally run with just the mow board that you see up underneath the machine. And when it gets heavier or starts blowing, we get big snow drifts. We've got plows that we can attach to the front. We've got an angle plow, like you've seen on the front of the trucks, that we can angle it left and right. This is the ripper teeth. The, the bigger ones you see, they're just upside down. They're not in use right now. We can flip them over as we need them to replace these smaller ones, the smaller ripper teeth down here. For when we get into harder materials, we can rip it, break it up a little better, and mix it, blend it if we're blending some kind of clay and aggregates or something together. In here, it's just you're basically your uh, motor compartment. That's where our guys check the oil, check your antifreeze up on top, and we're really adamant on about equipment maintenance. We like our operators to op operate safe equipment and be safe out there while we're doing it. Safety is our number one concern for the public and us. And this piece of equipment, it will articulate in the middle so we can get into tighter areas and work on slopes, different grades and angles with the machine. This is a mold board area that we do all the moving the material with. It uh, swings out in a lot of different configurations, angles left and right. 
up and down. I mean, you can do about any angle you want to with this. This is the uh, street sweeper. We are basically the last piece of equipment you'll see after a snowstorm. We clean up any road debris, any salt and sand left over. We have three brooms on the whole machine. There's two side brooms, which are positionable from in cab to sweep out gutters or anything else that has a slight off angle. Basically what they do is they pick up any material on the outside of the sweeper, bring it into the middle of the sweeper where the rear broom picks it up and uh, brings it to our conveyor. And we have our conveyor system that when it's in sweep mode, all the brooms fall to the ground. The conveyor will fall forward and put it in our hopper. So the rear broom collects everything that the side brooms bring to it and just feeds it into our conveyor. This is the rear mounted camera. Basically it gives me a view of anything behind the sweep or anything swept or any vehicles behind me as I'm backing up. This one's just our secondary camera. This one will give me a view of my side broom and anything else that might be on my right side of the sweeper. This is basically where all the controls are for the sweeper. There's a sweep and stop button. There is a hopper dump. There is water application. There is broom tilt and raise on and off for each side broom. An on and off switch for the main broom. I can adjust the RPM of each side broom depending on the conditions I need it for. And then any beacon lights. We have, uh, in any major predicted storm, uh, we will work with the uh, emergency providers uh, and during a major event, uh, the Sheriff Department will usually open the Emergency Operations Center of the Sheriff Department and uh, we coordinate with the EOC to make sure that we're providing adequate coverage to get people where they need to go. There's two blizzards that really stick out in my mind as being very significant in Douglas County and that's the blizzard of 1997 and then more recently the blizzard of, of 2003. Both of those instances are really situations where uh, we were getting uh, across the county uh, over 40 inches of snow in some areas. And so people really uh, were trapped in their homes and some unfortunately were, were unprepared. Uh, not only did we have to rescue people off the highway, we had to work with our public works department to be able to do that. Uh, we also recognize that, you know, heart attacks don't stop for winter storms and medical emergencies don't stop for winter storms and house fires still occur during winter storms and as a result of that we've still got to be able to get those other first responders law enforcement the fire departments to the locations where people need them to be the only way to do that is for our office of emergency management to coordinate with the public works department to ensure we can get those people plowed there get the snow out of their way and they can get there and do their job to me that should be one of our primary focuses is uh, life-threatening issues and uh, uh, I think it's very important that we do that. We get some uh, off-the-wall calls occasionally like uh, I'm running out of baby food. Well, you would think that if you have a predicted storm that uh, you would try to prepare for that, but some people often don't. Uh, we get a, quite a few calls. Uh, uh, have a an appointment for various medical reasons, chemotherapy, kidney dialysis, or something along that line, to where uh, if the uh, fire department, sheriff department, declare it a uh, absolute emergency, we will escort uh, the uh, providers, the emergency service providers, into a home to get that person out to uh, make their appointments or whatever the case may be. Uh, these folks don't have control over a major storm, thus we feel an obligation to help them out uh, within reason and uh, without impacting the uh, county as a whole. Douglas County has a lot of new residents. We're one of the fastest growing counties in the country. A lot of those residents come in from warm weather states. Uh, they're not used to driving in these conditions. 
guess the advice I'd give those residents and any resident is to drive carefully. Drive slow per the conditions. Keep plenty of distance between yourself and the car ahead of you. Majority of accidents that we see are people that just drive too fast for the conditions. I'd ask for them to slow down and kind of stay away from us and pass us on the right when it is safe because the visibility behind a plow truck is probably the worst you can ever see. It's the safest place on the road, people say, but right on us isn't. You want to stay back and you want to give us room because we're going to be doing lane changes and everything else. It's hard to see a uh, small vehicle behind those snow plows when they're throwing up a large amount of snow on their own and uh, traveling down the road at uh, 20, 25 miles an hour, sometimes faster on the arterial roadways. We request that people stay back a couple hundred feet, obviously except at intersections where they're coming up on a light, but uh, it would help us if people would do that. Basically, we turn on every light we possibly can, make ourselves as visible to the public as we can, and it's, uh, it's a big piece of equipment. This piece of equipment, I, I, I believe, is a little over 33,000 pounds sitting here, and it's 165 horsepower, so it will push a lot of snow. Those trucks are very big, and they can't see people very well when it's snowing hard. I would also recommend if you have kids, caution your kids to stay off the streets during and, and even and after a snowstorm. I know it might be fun to be out there you know, playing in the street, making snowmen, but again, we have big trucks and there are little kids out there and sometimes we can't see them. Every road is important and uh, we know every citizen needs to get where they need to go and uh, we try to make that effort. We do miss some on occasion, but again, we take a lot of pride in it. We have very experienced, very talented, and very dedicated employees that work in Road and Bridge. Our supervisory staff uh, has worked in, this, in Douglas County for over 20 years each. Uh, they take their jobs very seriously. Working with our Public Works Department, we're very fortunate in Douglas County that we have such a great relationship between first responders like our Office of Emergency Management and our Public Works Department. Rather than saying we're number one, uh, I, I would rather just say that we're really proud of what we do. We think we provide a quality product to the citizens of Douglas County. And regardless of who it is, what entity it is, it's a very, very difficult job to keep the roads open during a major storm, but we take a lot of pride in it and uh, we feel that we're uh, among the best. And uh, again, I don't like to get into comparison saying best or number one, but uh, we do, a, in, in my personal opinion, we do a great job of keeping the uh, roads open and providing snow removal services to the citizens of Douglas County. <laughs>